as I was walking past the cubicle, there was a gentleman sitting there at that desk. If that was you, can you do that again? Do you remember the movie, like the old Aliens movies, mm -hmm. the, the screeches that they mm -hmm. made? That's what it sounded like. I don't know, what women, was that? Women cackling. It's exactly. Mm -hmm. Show yourself. We're here to take you in. You all right? No, 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 no. What? Did something touch you? Yes, it did. I started working for the Southern West Virginia Convention and Visitors Bureau in 2003. Right after I started working, probably a couple weeks after I started working, I got really sick for about a week and I was contagious. So obviously I couldn't come to work. And so I didn't have any sick or personal or vacation time at that point. So when I got better, I had to start working on the weekends in the building by myself in order to build my um, personal time back up. And so I spent several consecutive Saturdays here by myself. So while I was here by myself, we had cubicles downstairs. So it was kind of like one, two, three. And my cubicle was on the end next to the stairs that led outside. And so I had two other cubicles that were to the right of me. And then there was another cubicle that was at the end on the left nearest the elevator. So what I experienced was I was just kind of there doing my work. I did a lot of data entry and I would hear um, to the right of me in the cubicle beside of me, I would hear what sounded like papers rustling. I thought it was odd, but we, the girls that worked there beside of me, they had huge stacks of paper in their cubicles. And so I thought, well, maybe she's just stacked it so high that it's probably just fallen off. And I just went on about my business. I really didn't think a whole lot of it at first, but then there were days during the week when certain girls would take days off or whatever, or go to a meeting, and I would hear the rustling again and know that there's nobody over there. It wasn't unusual for, say, the office manager to go into somebody else's cubicle and look for something if they were gone, if they knew you know, where it was. Um, and there were in instances where you would hear like somebody in the cubicle beside of you, Russell, 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 they would come out of that cubicle, Russell, Russell, Russell. And it just, you know, I just didn't really think a whole lot of it. And unbeknownst to me, there were, the other girls were hearing the same thing. The CEO that we had that worked here, his name was Jim. And Jim had a larger than life personality. And I really got along very well with Jim, but Jim, Jim was just, he was just big all over. Like he was big physically, he had a big personality. And he was one of those people that when he came into a room, he was usually coming in singing opera. Even if it wasn't an operatic song, he was singing it in opera. And so there was no sneaking up with Jim. You knew Jim was in the building. So one Saturday that I was sitting down there by myself, and I heard the elevator engage and it came down to the bottom floor where I was. The doors opened. Um, I heard someone come out of the elevator. They walked around the corner and um, I felt the presence of a person in that space. And I heard them go into the cubicle and I heard the rustling of the paper. Um, and I didn't really say anything and it wouldn't have been odd for Jim to have been in that person's cubicle looking for something because he worked all the time. Like he was just a workaholic. He, he was here at all hours of the day and night. Um, and so I really didn't think anything of it until I heard the person turn to leave. And I just blurted out, what Jim, you're not going to speak to me. And there was no answer. But yet I kept hearing a person walking down the hallway turned the corner, got back in the elevator, and the elevator engaged, went back up to the main floor, doors opened, and it was so unusual for Jim not to acknowledge one of his staff 
that I thought, you know, there's something going on. And so I got up from my desk and I thought, I wanna go upstairs and check on him. I came upstairs to the main floor and I expected at least a light to be on, but there were no lights on. The only light in the room was the natural light coming from the windows. And when I turned out of the elevator to go towards his office, which was at the front of the building where the main door is, there was no light on in his office. And so I walked to the office and there was nobody in that office. And so it's one of those things where, did this just happen? Is this, you know, did I dream it? You have no choice but to stay, <laughs> even though you're alone and you don't really want to be here anymore at that point. So I just went downstairs and busied myself with, you know, whatever I was doing. So I'm still working off that time um, where I was sick. And this was after I had thought that, the, that Jim, the CEO, had been in the building. Now, like I said, it was not unusual for Jim to work at all hours of the day and night. And he would come in on the weekend sometimes. And when he did, sometimes he would bring his kids with him just to give his wife, I guess, a, a little bit of a break from being with the kids all week long. And they were, they were great kids, they were rambunctious kids. They, you know, they were just normal kids. And so when they were in the building, you knew it because you would hear them romping and playing and laughing and yelling and asking their dad stuff, you know, whatever. And he had this big boisterous voice and you could hear him answering them back, you know. So I was here again on a weekend by myself and just doing my thing. And all of a sudden I hear like, rah, 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 rah. I mean, it was loud. Like you could feel the vibrations of the noise loud. And the first thing that I thought was, Jim's here with his kids. And rah, 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 you know, and I was like, man, those kids are out of control today. You know, I'm sure that his wife is really glad to be having break from him on a Saturday. But I didn't hear any laughing and I didn't hear Jim's voice talking to them. And so I thought, you know, I'm just gonna take a break. I'm gonna walk up the steps. I'm gonna, I'll just go say hello to everybody, you know. So this time I walked up the steps and again, I'm, I'm expecting lights to be on. And when I get to the top of the steps, there are no lights on. Again, it's just natural light. Um, I kind of, because it's the second time, I'm kind of like, oh. And so I go to look into Jim's office. There's no lights on. There's no gym, there's no kids. I'm the only person in here again. And so I went back downstairs and again, you're like, did this, did that happen? Did that really, did I really just hear that? And so I just started running over it in my head. And the more that I thought about it, what I heard, I would um, compare it to like, several horses, four big draft horses with a carriage behind it. Like that's what, that I think that's really what I heard truly in my mind. And because whatever it was that could have been running across the top of the floor, it had some power to it and it had some weight to it. And we're in a bank and banks have a lot of marble in it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so whatever it was had to be powerful. In my mind's eye, what I see when I think of that noise is a horse and carriage. Lots of horses with a big carriage. This is an old city and it's an old Civil War city. So yeah, why wouldn't it make sense that there would be a horse and carriage repeatedly running across 
you area. know, <laughs> this area. Yeah, and I didn't even take into consideration the Civil War part of it. So, you know, that could very easily be a herd of <laughs> soldiers coming across through here. So, personally, um, I think it's um, residual energy. I think what I he heard downstairs is someone who worked here and they're just continuing to go about whatever business it was that they did between the top floor and the bottom floor because they they would obviously go up and down between the two floors and then with the paper rustling maybe they're counting money you know I don't know what went on in the basement but then again um, I also think that whoever or whatever it was and maybe this is crazy I don't know they know how to work the elevator, which wasn't here back, way back in the day when the bank was first, you know, operating. And they know how to work the printer. So if it's residual energy, how far back? Because obviously it can engage the elevator and the printer. So I don't know, but anyway, I think for the most part it's residual energy. When I would come up to this, to the main floor and see that nobody was here, now, yeah, that would freak, that did freak me out. And feeling the feeling of a presence in the room with you, but nobody answers back. Yeah, it freaked me out. But I was never like terrified to be yeah. here, like calling somebody on the phone saying I'm not coming, you know. <laughs> it's just an odd building. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's just an odd building. So we were on a, a tour down here one night. I actually have photographs. And we got finished in the little conference room over here. Yeah. And as we were coming out, one of the ladies on the tour is blind. Yeah. Totally blind. She's got the little cane. She has somebody helping her. As she walks out the door, she's saying to me, she said, I'm hearing a lady's voice whispering to me and paper rumbling. I walk past her and the spirit box I had is lit up. Okay. Mm-hmm. A photographer standing back here took a photo of me in the spirit box. But if you see her in profile, there is a mist enveloping her entire head. Right, mm -hmm. th right there in that hallway. So one of the most amazing stories here. And this goes back to the 1970s. Folks that worked in the bank would have experiences in the vault. On a Friday night, they, everybody that worked here had a, had a basket in the vault that you put your daily work in other than the money. For us to get in the vault. When we, you would close the door, and that door could not be opened until 8 o'clock Monday morning, and it took two people with the combination. It's airtight. Uh, in fact, there's a valve in there. If you do get locked in the vault, you can open the valve to get fresh air in. We would come in, open the vault on Monday morning, and all of our work papers would be scattered. That would just happen once or twice a month. We'd come in, open the vault and have that same experience. In 2019, we did a 48-hour investigation in the bank. And we closed the door to the vault and we set up a uh, motion-activated night vision camera. About 24 hours in, you can see it looked like wind was blowing in the paper or shuffling. Considering that the door weighs nine times, it's, it's pretty amazing that even with the door closed, all righty so just a little bit ago um i was doing some initial setup and i went to check the elevator the elevator's going down I didn't push the basement button. I promise I didn't. <laughs> we just um, came from there. We didn't touch it. Mm. Uh, so I was down there and I was checking the elevator to make sure it wasn't on some kind of a loop system because some of them are made to operate like every so few hours or whatever to make sure the lubrication keeps from seizing up. And one of the things that I did was I went into Joseph's cubicle and put one of our voice recorders in there because one of the stories is that Joseph's been or and other folks have been heard talking down there and there's been conversations heard in German. So I put a Roy recorder in there. I think it was right about six o'clock that I set it up. And I walked over to the elevator and then walked back. And as I was walking past the cubicle, there was a gentleman sitting there at that desk. 
And the gentleman, I just kind of saw out of my peripheral for a second, and I turned, I turned just long enough to kind of lock my eyes on him, and he's gone. But he was an older gentleman. He looked to be like 50s or 60s to me, but I mean, I only got a glimpse of him for a moment. But he had kind of a, a receding hairline, had his hair kind of pulled back. It kind of looked brownish, but I guess under the certain conditions and the fact that I only saw it for just a moment, it could have been white. Had a goatee, kind of a beard, goatee. He was sitting there, he was working, and he was gone. He's right here. He was right there in that chair. Wow. <laughs> See, there's my recorder, because I came in and put it in here for him. And as, as as I came right around this corner, I saw him sitting there. He was sitting right there behind his desk. I, I knew him and in... Catherine Edwards. Yeah, they brought the photo album up here, and they brought a picture of him, and it was him that was sitting there. You have the picture handy so we can... He took a copy of it. He took a copy I of it. I got a copy of it. It's on my phone. Joseph, it's Scott. You knew me. Joseph, have you been working in this country? I know you were getting ready to go to Austria. Guys, we're going to take a moment. You got to see them, Joseph. You shot my bride. Feels like there's a spider crawling up the back of my neck. Joseph, is that you? As soon as we turned the app on, we got a barrage of what sounded like German voices. Um, not only do we have a person who worked here who was born in Austria, but we also have quite a few German-speaking Union soldiers that were on this property during the Civil War. Told. Told. Death. Yeah. Joseph, is that you? I don't know what your favorite coffee was. We just know that you... Came down okay. every morning. Decaf. It just <laughs> said decaf. I swear to God, that just said decaf. But did it say not decaf? Because I thought I, I, I don't not. know. I heard not decaf, decaf. <laughs> clear. Six foot three, three hundred and forty pounds. Get scared by a chair, so Teresa goes and sets in. <laughs> Teresa is hardcore. Oh, well, there's something about this room that a lot of people have had really negative reactions when they've opened the door and stepped inside. I mean, I wouldn't say my reaction was negative. It was just, it was a little creepy. Is talking to whatever was in there and Dan was just kind of filming stuff. I was taking pictures and then all of a sudden I felt like something do like like a movement down my neck and it scared the bejesus out of me and I took off. <laughs> right before this happened, you know, I was sitting in this chair and felt something touch my back and then all of a sudden it was gone and I was trying to talk to it and be like, oh yeah, I guess you left and now we know where it went. <laughs> yeah. And you tell me what your name is. Is going crazy. Uh -huh. It's solid. And it's basically dead over here. Is that you lining that up? That's not me peeking over here either. That's not the rim pot itself. Yeah, it's just right in that section. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some cordage right there. Is there anything in that table that. This is doing it right here, too. Is there anybody up here with us right now? Is that you making the lights light up? If it is, can you turn it off? Turn it back to green. Just make it go back to green for us. Okay. 
I mean, it's registering both at the same level, too, which mm-hmm. is... For verification purposes, let's line all three of those up and let's just see what they do. Let's all three of them together. Yeah, yours is almost in the yeah, down. I'm wondering if there's a router, an internet router near us. This one's not doing anything. Flashlight. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, if you're in here with us, we're going to have to have a little bit more than this little light show here. It looks like a disco. Can you knock on a wall or something like that to let us know you're here? The last time we were here, we were up in this room, and you slammed the door pretty hard somewhere in the building, if that was you. Can you do that again? That light is That's very bright. Can you turn it off for us? Turn that flashlight off, please. We can't tell if it's you or not unless you turn it off for us. Both the K2 meters died at the exact same time. What year do you think it is? Can you tell us what year? It's going pretty good. We've already had some uh, stuff light. happening. Light went off. All right, if that was you, can you turn that light back on and prove that this isn't something other than just the battery discharging at an alternate rate? I appreciate your help if you can do that. But I'm kind of hard to convince when it comes to technology. Thank you. All right. So here's what I want to do. Is I want to ask you a series of questions. If you agree with the question, can you make that light brighter? If you do not agree with the question, or if you do not believe that question to be accurate, and you turn the light off. So did you work in this building? Did you live nearby? I thought that was a, like a motorcycle. That's going out. Were you from somewhere else? Uh-huh. Are you from West Virginia? Were you from Deutschland? Did war bring you here? Were you in this location before this building was built? Can you provide us a little bit more to go by than just the little bit of light that we're getting so far. If you hear hearing me right now, can you make that light very bright? Ramp it up and show me that you're here. There you go. Take it up a little bit further for me. Come on, you can do it. We have several devices out here in front of you if you haven't already seen the little light show that we've got going on. There's a lot of different ways for you to communicate with us. You have the light with the flashlight, which you seem to be liking right now. Oh, not anymore? He doesn't like it anymore. The K2s are just like very consistent, which makes me think there's something. Uh-huh. I just can't understand this <laughs> 1862, the town of Beckley was occupied by the Union Army. 
And the site we're on now was the really nice home of a fellow by the name of Reverend Matthew Ellison. And when the Union Army got to town, first thing they did is they took over his church because Matthew had been preaching succession from his pulpit. So they ran him out of his church. And after about two months, they decided they didn't want him in town. They came to his house here, kicked in the door, Sergeant Wirtz, and they commenced to look for him. Matthew had fled and was hiding in the eaves of his attic, which is about the same level as the attic we're getting ready to go to. And they terrorized his wife. They ended up using the house for a hospital. And before the Union Army left in 1863, they burned the house to the ground as punishment for the Ellison family. We've had a lot of activity in the attic area um, that seems to indicate it's, it's Matthew Ellison, his family, and Union troops that were up there looking for him. And when they did find him, they arrested him and they uh, escorted him across Union lines, and he was basically banned from coming back to this area until after the war. Nobody had been up in the attic for maybe 15, 20 years until, I, until they unlocked the door and I started coming up here. In the attic where the upper floors of Matthew Ellison's home had been during the late conflict. Sir, how did you feel when West Virginia became a state and separated from Virginia? Did you feel it was illegal? A constitutional threat? I want to swap and make crazy. Yeah, we've got one rod over here that's swinging pretty radically. Sir, if you're listening to me right now, or whoever it is, can you cross those bars, cross those dowsing rods twice? They stop their cross. Okay. If that is truly you, can you back them out of the cross and cross them one more time? One swinging wildly. The other one's trying to move. It's really going. I mean, it's. Yeah. It, it would be. Do, it's doing a. Um, oh, it's going all the way around. Yeah, it's doing a 360. <laughs> Matthew, is that you? Show yourself. They're here to take you in. <laughs> so we're over here talking about some things we're from another right case here. that we're talking about. And we hear like this like screech noise. I don't know what it was. It sounded like women talking or something like that, like women like laughing or screeching or something. Mm -hmm. It came from back here. Yeah, I don't know. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my hair, everything on, on my hair starts standing up. Do you remember the movie, like the old Aliens movies, mm -hmm. the, the screeches that they mm -hmm. made? That's what it sounded like. I'm like, what women, was that? Women cackling. It's exactly. It was mm -hmm. women cackling. Mm -hmm. It was from this it was, They were laughing back here. And the women's bathroom's in there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you.